Divorce lawyers of Reddit, what's the worst way you've seen someone screw over their spouse? My uncle represented this guy getting a divorce from his wife of 15 years. Super toxic breakup, and they split everything 50-50. Even the land that the house they lived in sat upon. Well, she decided to build a house right behind the other house. Mind you, this was a lot of land probably 200 yards separating both home sites. So the back of the houses faced each other. The house gets built and my uncle gets a call from his client asking about the legality of a situation he'd gotten himself into. Apparently, his ex-wife would spend a lot of time in her backyard, so he saw her all the time. What he did was buy a female dog and name it the same name as his ex-wife. Anytime he would let his dog back in from her being outside, he would yell, Susan, you B-word, get in here. He would also yell if she was peeing on the flowers. Susan, you B-word, quit peeing on the flowers. Or Susan, you B-word, quit digging in the dirt. The ex-wife called the cops on him a couple of times, but there was nothing they could do because the dog was registered under the name of Susan. And she was in fact a female dog. So there you go. The couple separated 10 years ago, but didn't officially divorce until a couple years ago. She was going to get his house, so he burned it down, then faxed her the transfer of ownership forms. He might be going to jail for arson, though. I worked at a law firm that was subpoenaed as part of a divorce between a partner at the firm and a partner at another major law firm. The woman issued more than 70 subpoenas to banks, firms, investment companies, you name it. She was convinced he had squirreled away 20 plus million dollars overseas behind her back. It got so bad that she dug up receipts from 25 years ago to try to put together his grand conspiracy puzzle. In the end, after she racked up $1.5 million in legal fees and seven different lawyers, the judge said that this is ridiculous. There was no conspiracy, and you're not entitled to a portion of this phantom $20 million. Mind you, this was a major law firm partner who was acting this way. She made millions per year in her career, but she apparently lost her mind. Bad separation. Wife filed a restraining order on the husband. Very common. Wasn't a terrible guy, but not great either. A year into the divorce, his mother was dying. He asked his sister to speak with his ex-wife and asked to bring the kids to see her in the hospital before she died. The wife never did. Instead, she went to the court and said he violated the restraining order by trying to contact her. You can't contact someone through another party. He admitted to it and explained the situation, but was found in breach of the order. His mother died while he was locked up, and the wife never brought the kids to see her. Story from my parents who were lawyers. So, throughout the divorce proceedings, there was a car that was a huge point of contention between the husband and wife. After months and months of saying he would never let the wife have the car, the husband concedes in exchange for something great, like one of their summer houses. It turns out he'd been driving the car for three hours every day in a big loop around the city, putting thousands and thousands of miles on it, basically making it worthless. The amount of planning and spite that went into that was amazing. I did some consulting work for two divorce attorneys when I was in grad school. Their client was a career airline pilot. His wife worked part-time, so there was a huge income disparity. It was an ugly divorce. During the process, but before the final decree, tax time rolled around. The wife's attorney calls my guys and says, uh, her accountant just called. If they can just share their W-2s and file jointly, they each stand to save about $8,000 over filing separately. My guys took that info to the husband. He says, screw her. Losing eight grand is going to be way worse for her than it will for me. Cold as ice, man. Over here in the Netherlands, most legal costs are paid for by the government if your income is below a certain threshold. In practice, this means that if one of the spouses in a divorce has little to no income and the other one has a normal income, the one with the normal income will have to pay a lot if the process drags on. Considering there are plenty of ways to drag it on, I've seen cases approach ridiculous amounts of billable hours. There is a catch to this, however. Your lawyer is paid a set amount if he or she is paid by the government. However, should the money you receive after a divorce or whatever exceed a certain number, you're expected to pay your own lawyer, which is the reason we still keep track of the hours in these cases. So this one woman who thought she was screwing over her ex-husband by dragging the divorce over multiple years got a payout of 40000 in euros by the end of it. Unfortunately for her, she had to surrender most of that straight back in lawyer costs. There was a certain sense of justice in there. Also proves time and again that when there is conflict, the only true winners are usually the lawyers. Banker here. 
had heaps of situations where joint overdraft slash credit card comes up just before the divorce to absolutely surprise one of the parties. Drained down to zero, of course. Especially bad when it's students or young kids who find themselves heartbroken after the breakup and with debt they can't afford. I had a guy who was married to a woman who slept with another guy, had that other guy's baby, and never told the husband. Then, for other reasons, they start filing divorce proceedings. A paternity test is done, the husband finds out the kid isn't his, and the courts rule that he still has to pay child support, because it's in the best interests of the kid. I handled a divorce between a wife who was a teacher and a husband who was a CVS cashier. I represented the wife. For all intents and purposes, the wife was the breadwinner of the family, and she supported herself, her husband, and their two children. I should note, one of the children was severely autistic and required intensive and expensive rehab and education. During the process of the divorce, the husband, living alone, sued the wife, caring for both children, for temporary spousal support. He met all the statutory guidelines to receive it, but it just came off as slimy. At the day of the hearing, the judge reviewed all of the facts and spent 20 minutes tearing the husband a new one. He called him a vile creature that was everything wrong with society. The judge then told us that his hands were tied and that he was forced to grant the spousal support, but he let everyone know how little he thought of the husband. As we were leaving the court, the husband just kept saying to my crying client, Just like good fellas, screw you, pay me. It was literally humanity at its worst. I'm not a divorce lawyer, but being a banker, I get to delve into the personal lives of people, and this is what a customer had told me. Well, basically, the divorce was cut and dry, but as a professional, that's not my business why. But I'm worried about his financials, though. My guy was the breadwinner in the house. He was a construction foreman, I believe, so he was the guy planning, paying, and watching his employees. He was great. Apparently, his wife wanted everything. But the thing that ticked him off the most was the fact that she took the boat, his boat that he had purchased before ever meeting her. The funny thing is, though, she can't afford anything to move the boat with, like a truck. So he had to legitimately move his boat with his truck to some place she was staying at and just leave it. He lost his boat. He asked me at the end how old I was. I tell him 21. He told me never to get married. I'll get to keep all my stuff at the end. I saw a future ex-wife fight vigorously over disability benefits of a not yet retired career military guy. She had a new guy to bankroll her and legal fees were nothing to her. So she dragged out asset division and divorce proceedings for months over not yet accrued disability benefits of her soon-to-be ex-husband. Total amount to which she would have been entitled? About $400. That is before Supreme Court decided disability benefits are not marital property. It was some very petty bull. Wife and husband number one divorce with a child. Wife gets custody of child. Husband number one pays child support. Wife marries husband number two. Husband number two adopts the child. Husband number one is no longer on the hook for child support as husband number two is now legally the father. Wife and husband number two get a divorce. Because of the adoption, husband number two has to pay child support for the child. Wife remarries husband number one. Now the child lives with husband number one, the biological father, and husband number two, the adoptive father, still has to pay child support. My wife is a divorce attorney, so she told me about this one. The couple was still living together during the divorce process, but separate bedrooms and all that. Anytime the husband would buy a snack, like chips or crackers, he'd come home to his soon-to-be ex-wife, who would smash the bag until the snack was dust, but never open it. So anytime he'd go to eat a snack that he thought was new, he'd only end up disappointed. He was not awarded a restraining order or anything for this either. He was super mad about the dust snacks, however. I was a clerk of the court and we handled a lot of divorce files. You wouldn't believe how many people submit nude pictures of their soon-to-be exes into court to record as evidence. Not because the pictures are relevant in any way to divorce proceedings, but simply to humiliate them. Court files, unless sealed by the judge, are public record, so anyone who cares to look can access the court file and all the exhibits. Family court is the most depressing division. Don't send nudes to people. The husband cheated on his wife and she found out. One day, she went back to their old house and put shrimp in all the curtain rods. The husband, who was trying to sell the house, couldn't figure out where the smell was coming from. He ends up selling it at a massive loss and below value due to the smell. The wife was the one who ended up buying it. 
The husband was a pretty good dude, as he was a good dad to the kids and was a good provider for the family. He wanted to get the divorce over with as amicably as possible, but the wife, who had actually cheated on him, wanted everything, including the guy's soul apparently. She got the house, custody of the kids, and alimony, but they both ended up racking up thousands of extra dollars in attorney's fees over a vase and a journal. Both items belonged to the husband's grandmother and were her only possessions that made it through the Holocaust before she immigrated to the US. The judge ended up ruling that the wife got possession of those items too. As soon as she got her hands on them, she smashed the vase with a hammer and burned the journal. She left the pieces of the vase and the ashes of the journal at the doorway of his one-bedroom apartment he had been financially forced to move into. I did some work for the attorney on this case. Local investment broker who's done well. Strong practice and very affluent client base. Wife owns a small shop in the local community. A pet pastime. Doesn't really turn profit. Been trying to get pregnant for a couple of years. Working with reproductive doctors and clinics. Wife finally gets pregnant. One in a million chance. Has the baby and it's a boy. Fast forward a couple of months. The wife has to go to the market for her shop and takes a day trip to the big city a couple of hours away. The husband prepared for this and takes the opportunity to have the baby tested for paternity, not his. When they started at the fertility clinic, he was tested and knew he was shooting blanks. So he contacts his attorney, my boss, and we start the plan. While we're preparing the case, we have a PI follow his wife. He follows her to a few doctor visits, tennis lessons, lunch at the country club daily, and hanging out with her friends. Her friends decide to throw her a birthday party at the country club. This is our opportunity. I serve her the divorce papers, loudly asking her name and, after confirming, announce the reason for the divorce. Infidelity. You are hereby ordered to appear in the blank county court, blah blah blah. Her friends are stunned. Discovery reveals that she and her friends are all cheating in the same circles. We go to court and present evidence showing the husband is not the father and request to have his name removed from the birth certificate. The judge, not wanting the child to become a ward of the state, orders her to produce a list of all the people she slept with during the reasonable window of conception. She provides the list. During the next court appearance, 10 men show up running the full gamut of personalities. One doctor, one architect, a tennis coach, two chefs, one trust fund prince, and a few others to round out the mix. One was actually the father of the person they really needed, but when she said John Doe, she didn't specify John Doe Jr. All were ordered to take a DNA test. Our client succeeds in getting his name removed from the birth certificate, no child support, and no alimony. Wife strikes a deal with the baby daddy for child support and support support payments for a number of years. She does end up winning. It was the doctor. Part of the agreement is she has to move from the area, paid for by the doctor. NDA signed. The doctor was very rich and must protect his name and reputation. The court allowed no dad on the birth certificate because of guaranteed support for the child. A trust fund. The wife was at work when the husband closed on their house, but he took his mom and she signed the papers. Years later, they divorce and wife demands the house, but gets an eviction notice from the mom. Wife had no idea they'd been paying rent. I was approached to handle a post-divorce enforcement proceeding. The guy was owed somewhere in the neighborhood of like $5,000 which hadn't been paid in a few years and was already reduced to judgment. He reached out because he found some money she was squirreling away and he wanted the judgment enforced against it. The money was funds raised through a firehouse benefit dinner which was held for cancer treatments because she was uninsured. I declined. I had an epic client who hated his wife's guts. He was asked to pay an interim maintenance of rupees, 3,000 per month. This guy goes to the bank and gets 3,000 bucks, all in one rupee coins, and gives it to his wife in court. Technically, it's legal. So the wife had to sit and count all the coins in court. And then he says he wants the bag back. Technically, it's his bag. So this lady is left with 3,000 coins and no way to carry it home. This guy was an evil genius. I used to be a paralegal, but not a lawyer. I remember reading about one case that I couldn't remember the name of when I went to look for it. The parties had about $15 million in assets, and the husband had owned about 90% of the assets going into the marriage. The courts wanted to award the wife about $2 million and give the husband the rest and the husband wanted to leave her destitute. He ended up spending all of his money to fight at every step of the way by filing frivolous motions and just generally doing whatever he could to be a jerk. After attorney fees, penalties and costs, and money wasted on schemes, the total remaining assets the parties had was about 500 k The courts awarded all of it to the wife and left him completely broke. 
Guy wins lottery big time. Millions. Never tells his wife. Technically, half belongs to her. Taxes already taken, so he just needs to note it in tax forms, which wife always signs without looking. Divorce. Husband offers no hassle. Generous divorce settlement, which her lawyer advises her to take. He moves to a nearby town and lives normally, gradually losing touch with everyone who knows him. Then he moves again, losing touch with everyone. That's when he starts spending the dough. This one's a bit of a story, but here it goes. The guy lives on his family farm all his life. His mother lives with him, but the father had already passed away. One day, his mom says he should get a wife as he starts getting a bit older himself. He finds someone online. She has a teenage daughter already, but whatever. Things move along and they're all living together on the farm. He does the farming and decides to let her handle the books. The wife then sees how much money this guy's actually got and starts spending a lot of it. Sends the daughter to private schools, starts buying expensive things, etc, etc. But she doesn't pay the farm's bills. The land was still on mortgage. He finds out because he gets a call from the bank saying that he's past due and nothing's been paid. He ends up losing the farm. He gets into a big argument with his wife. They split up. She gets him and his mother kicked out of the house, even though it was their house to begin with. So he leaves to the city. He doesn't like it. After all, he was farming out in the country all his life. So he calls up his friend, asks if he can come back to town and stay at his place. Friend says sure. He arrives at his friend's house. The friend isn't there. Instead, he finds his ex-wife and her daughter. He snapped. He took a gun from his vehicle and shot and killed them both. I've got a few stories from my husband who's an attorney. A man had been assaulting his five-year-old daughter and the wife found out about it, left him and filed for custody. The vindictive SOB accused his wife of assaulting the daughter just so she wouldn't get custody either. The girl went to his wife's parents and suddenly the husband remembers that the wife's parents also assaulted her too. Again, all this just so that the wife wouldn't get custody. The girl ended up in foster care for a whole year while the investigations went on, and the wife and her parents were cleared. The father served time and is now allowed supervised visits. Then there was a woman who was married to a man who sold guns for a living and loved hunting more than anything. She accused him of domestic violence because she knew he would no longer be allowed to own or carry guns. Next, a woman in the middle of a divorce invited her soon-to-be ex to reconnect, seduced him, and offered him alcohol, then threw him out of the house. She called the cops and reported seeing someone swerving on the road. He was arrested, taken to jail, and lost his job because of the DUI. His job involved driving. Lastly, a man told his wife that he would give up custody of their twin daughters if she agreed not to go after spousal support or ask to split any assets. She agreed and the divorce was finalized. The day the papers were signed, he went after full custody of the twins, saying that he could take better care of them because he had a big house and she only had an apartment, and he made more money and things like that. Just to leave her with as little as possible, he told his attorney. When the judge wouldn't grant him custody because of their previous arrangement, he went after one of them and permanently split up the twins. So many stories, but generally the cases that sickened me the most went like this. Wife has baby. Husband has zero interest in child and even resents the attention that the child takes away from him. Tells wife that she is 100% responsible for this child, even financially. Wife realizes that husband is a jerk parent and that makes him a jerk partner. She would actually rather be a single parent than deal with his man-baby nonsense. Divorce petition is filed. The husband is told by his lawyer that the more time he has with his kid, the less child support he'll have to pay. The husband starts going to doctor appointments, doing stuff with the child, and, you know, being a parent. The parties are now divorced. Husband has a 50-50 timeshare and is a doting father. All wife wanted was for husband to take an interest in the child, but she had to divorce him to get it. I had this case while working as a law clerk. The husband had a fancy job and got stationed abroad, so the wife and two kids moved with him. He got a really high salary, all expenses paid, while the wife was a stay-at-home mom with no income of her own. The marriage ended up failing and they moved back home to Sweden, and the wife sued for alimony, which she was entitled to by law, so she would be able to take care of the kids every other week. She hadn't worked for a number of years and had a hard time getting back into the job market, no savings, etc. Suddenly, the husband, who basically hadn't had to pay any bills for several years, claimed he was also broke. He only had around one million or so and was forced to spend it on an apartment in one of the most expensive parts of town so he had somewhere to live. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. 
Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.